I'm in my Visual Studio Code environment with an SSH session open to the Ubuntu server I'm going to be installing Jenkins on. To get started, we'll need to add the Jenkins repository. That way we can install it. So the first thing we'll do is install the private key. We can see from the output that the import was successful. If we app key list and search for CloudBees, which is the vendor behind Jenkins, we'll see that the key was imported. Great. Next, we'll install the repository now that we have the secure key. To do this, we're going to just add a line to our Jenkins.list file inside of sources.list.d. We're going to do this with a little magic here by echoing out the top line and piping it to a sudo t. This is just a nifty way I like to use the sudo command on the other side of my pipe. Now we'll go ahead and update the repository. With our apt repositories updated, we can go ahead and query our apt cache to make sure Jenkins is there. And it is. Now we can install Jenkins. One point that can trick up a new sysadmin when installing Jenkins is that it really requires the OpenJDK 8. So on some Linux systems, you'll have to not only install it, but set it as your default JDK environment. With our OpenJDK installed, we have all our prereqs, and we can go ahead and install Jenkins. Awesome, our output looks good, so let's go ahead and just start it. We'll use the systemctl command. When Jenkins is installed, it creates a randomly created password, and this can be used to do the initial setup of the server. So we'll just cat out the contents of the initial admin password file, and we'll go ahead and copy it to our clipboard. Now, let's open a web browser to our server's IP address on port 8080. Great, and we can see that the Jenkins server is up and running, but it needs the password to move on. Now, one of the really exciting things about Jenkins is it has plugins that can connect it to just about anything. We can select our plugins manually, or let's just go ahead and accept the suggested plugins so we can move forward. Now, with our plugins installed, we can go ahead and set up our first admin user. For the next step, if you're using a CNAME or alias to point to your Jenkins server, you'll want to put it in here, but we can just leave it as is for this demo. And now, once we're logged into Jenkins, we can really get to work. To get a good idea of what Jenkins is all about, let's just create a little sample job. I'll click Create New Jobs. And you can see that Jenkins has a lot of pre-built job types here. But for our test, we'll be using the Freestyle project. By looking around at the options in the job categories, you can get a good idea of what the features are here. Let's quickly add a description. And we'll add a build step. Now this build step can execute any command on one of our build servers. Typically in a production environment, you'll have a main Jenkins server that acts as your master and then several worker nodes. And these worker nodes will need to have the environments required to build your software. So we'll add our bash to bang and then we'll add a echo hello Jenkins. Finally, we'll save our changes. So now we have our first project and our first job inside of our project. These jobs can be triggered by anything. Click build now to manually start the job. And we can see in our build history that we have a job running. And if we click the console output, we can see that our command completed successfully and it outputted the required text, hello Jenkins. So hopefully we have a better understanding of what Jenkins is and how it can be used moving forward and we definitely learned how to install it. In a production environment, you'd want to be using HTTPS and you'd want to set up some worker nodes. Thanks for watching.